We found a great deal on an Asus Strix Z270F motherboard, so we did what any good computer geek would do. We built a system that we didn't need, and then we made a video. Don't go anywhere. This project started with the motherboard. We picked it up for almost half price. It's an ASUS Strix Z270F gaming model with support for 6th and 7th generation Intel processors. It's an ATX board that supports 64GB of memory, 2-way NVIDIA SLI, and 3-way AMD Crossfire. It's got a pair of M.2 PCIe sockets and plenty of USB connections including 3.1. It's a great looking board with a neutral black and grey color scheme that will fit most builds. The RGB lighting on the I.O. cover adds a touch of flair. I'm not a big fan of RGB, but this board implements it quite well and I'm starting to appreciate it a little bit more. The Z270F also has a pair of RGB headers so you can add additional lighting to the case. Speaking of the case, we went with the Cooler Master Masterbox 5 for this build. This is one of the easiest cases I've ever used. The modular design allows for tremendous flexibility. Don't like where something is? Just move it. There's plenty of space in the main compartment for components and enough room on the backside for cable management. One negative may be the power supply shroud. It's made of plastic and feels cheap, but it does the job. The mesh front panel allows plenty of airflow, although it's worth noting this case doesn't include any intake fans, only a single 120mm rear exhaust. We solved the lack of intake fans with a Corsair H100i V2. Most users will likely use a water cooling solution with this chassis, so the lack of intakes isn't a big deal. We did originally have a Hyper TX3 air cooler for this build, but swapped it out with the AIO for better performance. We did choose to mount the CPU block upside down to give us a bit more space for the hoses, but that's going to be a matter of personal preference. The black and grey color scheme of the Corsair fans was the perfect match for our Strix motherboard. Underneath the cooler is an Intel i5-6600K processor. This board supports the full line of Skylake and Kaby Lake processors. We got a deal on the i5, so that's why we opted for it over the i7. We also wanted a good all-around machine for productivity and light gaming that wouldn't break the bank, so we didn't need the i7, but we needed a bit more punch than an i3 offers. We also went light on the RAM, with an 8GB kit of Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4-2133 memory. Our Strix motherboard does support NVMe M.2 drives, but we opted for a Samsung 960 EVO SSD with 250GB of capacity. We couldn't find any PCIe M.2 drives on sale, and we were on a bit of a roll with this build. We managed to get every component we needed for less than retail cost. The Samsung SSD is plenty fast for our needs. We can still upgrade to NVMe in the future. Powering our build is an EVGA Supernova 750G2 power supply. I love EVGA's power supplies, and we also managed to find this unit on sale for a great price. It's 80 plus gold certified, and the modular design allows us to eliminate unnecessary cables to improve the airflow and aesthetics of our build. The GPU was the only odd part of this build. We didn't necessarily need a dedicated graphics card. Let's be honest, we didn't even need the system. We're just building for fun, so we didn't purchase a GPU. We did however stick in an NVIDIA GTX 770 card we had laying around. It's an ASUS DirectCU2 model with 2GB of video memory. It's a bit more of a power hog than its 900 or 1000 series cousins, but our power supply has plenty of headroom, and the GTX 770 is still a good card for the games we play. When we ran it through Unigen Valley, we managed a respectable 1758 on the Extreme HD preset, so we won't have any problems clearing a few Nephilim rifts in Diablo later on. We also ran this machine through PC Mark 10 to get an idea of its performance for everyday productivity. We ran it with both the integrated Intel 530 and the GTX 770, just to see how much of a difference the older card had on performance. Without the discrete GPU, our system scored 3571. With the GPU, we saw a jump to 4510. Both benchmarks showed a weakness for digital content creation, but that's not the purpose of this build, so these benchmarks are in line with our expectations for this system. Just a quick note, we are running a slight 11% overclock to allow our RAM to run at 2133 MHz. Best retail price we could find for this system is just under $900 US. Keep in mind this price list doesn't include the cost of a GPU. You should be able to pick up a U770 like we have for about $100. For a new card, the GTX 1050 would be a great budget choice, or a 1066GB for more enthusiastic gaming and a bump in content creation. What GPU would you put in this system if you're going to build it? We look forward to reading your comments down below. Overall, for a $900 computer system that we didn't need and only built because we found a great deal on a motherboard, 
We're pretty happy with this machine. It's got a great balance of performance and price. The muted color scheme may not suit everyone, but that's what the LED headers are for. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel for more upcoming videos. I just got my hands on an Acer Predator 17, and I'm really looking forward to reviewing it for you guys. Watch for that video in a week or so. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button. It helps me out a lot. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.